Hello everybody. Today we are gonna talk about special theory of relativity, and my name is Vignesh. First of all, we'll talk about the basis, and we'll get in deep into it, and we'll derive the time dilation and length contraction. Most of you might have come here after hearing the words like time dilation and length contraction. Even though if you have not heard about them, you'll get to know after this video. Let's get into it. This theory was proposed by Albert Einstein in 1907. He published this in a paper in Germany, <coughs> in Germany, which has become very popular there. It basically deals with that simple thing that speed of light is constant. As you all might know, speed of light is represented by capital C and is approximately equal to 3 into 10 power 8 meter per second. And it's says that speed of light is actually constant no matter with what re with respect to what you are moving whether you are stationary or whether you are moving in with some velocity doesn't matter speed of light is always constant it does not change relatively and the maximum speed is c no object in this universe can move faster than speed of light as because it will require an infinite amount of energy to do such act so First of all, let's talk about time dilation and then we'll go into length contraction so that you'll be, it'll be easy for you to understand. As you all might know, V is equal distance by time. Let's consider a clock. Let's say this is a clock, first of all. Let's say these are two mirrors parallel to one another and a photon is oscillating in between them. Obviously, whose speed will be C. So the time taken for the photon to oscillate for one time that means to make one oscillation will be t is equal to let's say this distance as d small d so the t is equal to 2d by c as it moves two times to and fro let's say this as t naught and now let's consider the second case when this mirror is actually moving with velocity v in the forward direction so after some time it will come into this position And let's say this instant when the photon hits the bottom plate. And let's say an observer who is inside the mirror is observing everything here. And an observer on stationary ground. So if you observe, the photon has actually travelled a longer path than in the first case. So this, per you, you, this person will always say that same, always, let's say first of all that if a photon makes one oscillation let be like one second and as he is moving with respect to this stationary so that he will also say that just one second has passed but according to this person as the photon has moved a longer distance he will say that time is actually running more that means he will measure more amount of time so that means that one second of this person is actually equal to two seconds on the ground that means time is actually running flow the Flow. Time is running slow for the person <coughs> who is moving with respect to the stationary ground with the velocity v. So the time calculated here will be t is equal to let's say this distance as capital D 2d by c. As obviously we know that capital D is smaller c sorry capital D is greater than small d this time will be always be greater than t naught. Now let's get into calculations of time dilation. Let's say this has moved a distance v t naught and this distance will be v t naught by 2 as these both are symmetrical triangles this will be half of this. So by applying Pythagoras theorem d square is equal to small d square plus v square t naught square by 4. Applying root over both sides, d is equal to root over d square plus v square t naught square by 4. By putting this thing in this equation, let's call it equation number 2 and this as equation number 1. By putting this in this equation, we'll get t is equal to 2 into root over d square plus v square t naught square by 4 whole divided by c 
and from equation one we know that d is equal to t naught c by two putting this here t is equal to two into root over t naught square c square by four plus v square t naught square by four whole divided by c taking t naught square c square and one by four common we'll get t is equal to t naught into root over one plus v square by c square so from this we can actually see that if time passes one second here it will actually be more than one second for the person who is in who is moving with velocity v as of because this this term will always be greater than one so t will always be greater than t naught so this is actually called time dilation because time here is dilating one second or uh, inside the object or some spaceship which is moving with velocity v will be greater than the one second in the stationary frame like earth so now let's get into length contraction when it comes to length contraction most people will explain this using lorentz transformations which is a bit difficult to understand but i'm going to make it easy for you let's say there's a spaceship here is moving with a velocity v and there's a person observing it from ground frame or the frame which is at rest and there's a person in the spaceship for this person who is on the ground will notice that after after certain time the spaceship has reached a distance d the front part of the face spaceship has written moved a distance d let's say this distance as small d let's say the time will be some t or t not now let's do this calculation using the frame of reference of the person who is inside the spaceship but when it comes to the person inside the spaceship the time calculated by him or measured by him will be less than t naught so according to him the spaceship will not move distance d it will actually move a smaller distance because as we know distance is equal to velocity into time as time calculated by him is less than the time calculated by ground frame person so it should move lesser distance that means let's say it comes in here what this is contradictory because one event which is happening from ground frame is not actually happening from the other frame but it should always happen so what we are going to do here let's say what if the only option here will be that the length should be decreased according to him he is not moving the other world it is moving in the opposite direction so by this we can bring out the postulate that when anything moves with certain velocity it actually decreases in its length so now let's calculate it let's say this is the distance d1 as measured by or as pursued by the person inside the spaceship as you all know that v is equal to distance by time let's say this as d1 distance by time here t is equal to t not by root over 1 plus v square by c square after putting this in here v is equal to d1 by t not by root over 1 plus v square by c square taking this to the other side we'll get that d1 is equal to v t not by root over 1 plus v square by c square as we know that from this frame of reference v is equal to d not by or d not let's take this d not d not by t not d not will be equal to v into t not putting this here d1 is equal to d not by root over 1 plus 
v square by c square you might get confused why did why did i put this thing here because it's actually the opposite t is equal to t naught by root of 1 plus v square by c square but why did i put in the opposite way this is actually with respect to the person who is on the ground who is stationary but here as we are doing this with respect to the person who is in the spaceship here actually t and t naught will be changed change the positions of t and t naught will be changed so that it will be exactly opposite here when we are seeing from this frame of reference this will actually become stationary frame and this is these are the out, outside things which are actually moving with velocity so we will definitely we we'll should use that equation in the opposite direction or sorry opposite way so i put here t is equal to t0 by root of 1 plus v square as you can see the d is obviously less than d0 so this is the proof for length contraction so by this you must understand that when uh, there is any particle or any body like let's say a spaceship which is moving with velocity v which is very much comparable to speed of light and a person who is in the stationary frame when the sta when this person one observes the person two he says that time is actually running slow for the person who is in the spaceship and the spaceship contracts its length that means the spaceship decreases its length and the same and the person who is inside the spaceship num person number 2 says that time is actually running slow for the person on the earth and it is the earth which is compressed or contracted because according to his frame he is stationary and all other things are moving so this is it special theory of relativity hope you understood it very well it is pretty much easy if you change your view about the time and all those things which you which we assume assume that they are actually same for everybody so please like and subscribe for more videos and leave comment on this video